Now, mind you, I was never a big fan of the Enzo and Big Cass split. And I even did a video about it. And I thought it was silly at the time. I thought it was way too early. You had too much mileage left on the tag team. There just wasn't a very good reason to do it. And it was interesting to hear as this whole split up was kind of happening about the heat that both of the guys were getting backstage. Big Cass because of his pro-Trump views and Enzo because apparently he was believing too much in his own BS and he was rubbing everybody the wrong way with his attitude, his shtick, his gimmick. He basically was who you see on TV all of the time. And now we've gotten to a point where it's clear to see the WWE is sabotaging Enzo Amore. And I'm sorry, this is stupid and it needs to cut out. Now you'll have marks like Chris Jericho and others try to pretend like WWE doesn't sabotage people. But we all know that's a load. We all know that's just corporate spin because there is no way possible, whether you're enjoying it happening or not, there is no way to deny what is clearly evident to you is that the WWE is indeed sabotaging Enzo Amore. You've got all the talking heads on commentary blasting on the dude, throwing in little jabs about his heat backstage and everything else. You've got table for three where we're talking about his heat or whatever it was with Rosenberg and who gives a crap. One of the network specials are talking about Enzo and what he's like backstage. And again, this is all happening for a reason. Booking him to continually look stupid. Like even at SummerSlam, we put him in a shark cage when he's the baby face. He was the victim to begin with of what Big Cass did just so that way he could strip down, grease up, escape the cage, and immediately get the big boot from Cass. And it's been a continual theme. You're continually booking him to look stupid, to look weak, to look feeble, look like he's out of his league, to get squashed. And again, this is clear to see, and it's clearly a message being sent by WWE. They're trying to sabotage this guy. They're intentionally choosing to try and slowly bury him as much as they can without drawing too much attention to it, but drawing all types of attention to it. And it's just ridiculous. Why? Because the dude has backstage heat? Because people don't like him? What an idiotic reason to bury somebody. Is he hurting a bunch of people in the ring? Not to my knowledge. Is his shtick and personality detrimental to the performances of other performers in WWE? Not to my knowledge. And if it is, then maybe it's those other individuals that should be sabotaged, if anything, because if this, this stick is affecting them, then we got bigger problems. Is he getting in any legal trouble? Not as far as I know of. Is he flunking drug test? As of this time, not as I know of. So because he rubs people the wrong way, that's a good reason to try and bury the guy, to potentially ruin his career? That's just dumb. Like, what business in the world operates under that mantra and mindset and expects to be successful? In the real working world, you have this all the time. You are not going to get along with everybody. You are not going to please everybody. You're going to have people that rub you the wrong way. People that you rub the wrong way. An awful lot of rubbing going on here. But here's the facts is it comes down to ultimately, can you produce and can you be a part of a team? And even if he's got a bunch of backstage heat, even if everybody's annoyed by him, the simple fact of the matter is, is Enzo can still be a part of a team in his own way. He's one of the few guys whose shtick actually translated from NXT, Triple H's golden child that everybody likes to kiss his taint about. The fact is, is the vast majority of the gimmicks in NXT don't translate because they're NXT-based gimmicks based off of a certain type of audience that is only a small portion of the total WWE viewership, most especially Raw. Enzo's shtick translated and translated in a big way, and he's bigger on Raw than he was on NXT, and that's a fat jack. He gets a live mic and featured segments, including crossover, one-hour, two-hour main events, opening segments, main event segments, and the reason being is Enzo is at least able to hold ratings, if not get slightly more than the previous segment. And how do you know this without seeing the quarter-hour ratings? Because ultimately, as much as he's annoying everybody in the WWE, if he didn't draw ratings or didn't at least maintain and hold ratings, they wouldn't put him in this spot. You can watch a show and you can see he clearly moves merch. And you can even see that from some of the people that do videos on here on YouTube. He clearly moves merch. This midget got over looking like a dumbass version of Chester Cheetah with absolutely no wrestling ability. 
and we want to sabotage him just for the hell all of it? Because he annoys people? You know what's annoying to me is thinking back to Zack Ryder in 2011. He embraced the internet early on, and instead of like the idiotic WWE who tried to create a WWE Universe website, instead of embracing Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and sites like that, you know, social media platforms that already had established bases, the WWE tried to do their own dumb crap with WWE Universe site and tout, and how do those work out? (laughs) Zack Ryder embraced the platforms that were already there, showed the WWE the way, owned that platform from a wrestling standpoint, along with, I would say, back then, the Hardys, especially Matt. He got himself totally organically over, all on his own, without any help from the WWE whatsoever, even at times when they were still trying to sabotage him as he was going around the WWE and getting himself over. And you talk all the time. The WWE, Vince, and people associated with the company, people from the past, the Stone Colds and the what have you. You want guys to take risks and take chances? Bullshit! Because you had Zack Ryder six, seven years ago take a big chance, and it was paying off for him big, and the WWE couldn't wait to sabotage him, and they still do to this day, because it didn't matter if he got over. It matters whether or not they wanted him to get over, and did he get over the way they wanted him to? And when the answer to both of those questions is no and no, Vince and the WWE, Kevin Dunn, all of them are going to do everything they can to put the screws to you, and it makes absolutely no sense. If you don't like these guys and you don't want them to get over, then why do you have them under contract? Why are they your employees? Or excuse me, your independent contractors. Why would you waste a roster spot on them if you don't envision them being a way to help you make any money whatsoever? And you intentionally create an environment where they do just that. They don't make you any money because you don't want them to make any money. Who operates a business like this? This is stupid. This would be like having a sales team of 50 people and you take 20% of them, 10 of them, And you say, we just have you on the team for morale. Your sales performance could be a third of everybody else's, but we're going to keep you. Because we like you and you're doing things the way we want to. No, at some point in time, if they're only selling a third of what everybody else is, and they're only halfway to the goal of what they're supposed to be, at some point in time, they're going to get fired as they should because they're not cutting the mustard. It doesn't matter how they do it. The matters is, did they get the results? And that's what's so frustrating to get back to Zack Ryder. They didn't want him to get over, and they made sure as hell he didn't get over. They minimized him and then stole the whole concept of owning the internet or using the internet as an additional platform to deliver the WWE product and pretended like it's WWE's idea all along. We embrace Twitter. Just because you sat there for a long time and pounded the WWE app down everybody's throat knowing that you were eventually going to release the WWE network and the app was going to be one of those delivery methods, one of those delivery platforms, in no way, shape, or form means that you ever fully embraced or understood the internet. It took you far too long. It was guys like Zack Ryder that proved that this was a way to go. This was a way of the future. So instead of rewarding him, You punished him and continue to punish him to this day. And it was ridiculous with Zack Ryder. And while it's a slightly different scenario, it's completely and totally ridiculous with Enzo Amori in 2017. You got so many bland vanilla crapheads, both big and vanilla midgets. It doesn't matter. You've got all types of turds floating around all over the place. Bray Wyatt is every bit the turd that a Sami Zayn or a Finn Balor is. And we all know that's true. You got turds everywhere, a bunch of guys that couldn't dream of getting over to nearly the level that Enzo Amori did. And you were in no position to have the luxury of choosing to send messages and sabotaging guys. Too few guys are actually legitimately over and legitimately get over the right way. Like for years, you've even been trying to take one of your golden children, Roman Reigns, and try to get him over one way, and it's went a completely different opposite path. Enzo, at least, has gotten over like a baby face as a freaking baby face. How many people on this roster can actually do that? It's ridiculous. And for a company that is so invested in their merch results, they're so driven by merch as one of the key components of their bottom line, as they should be, why in the world would you sabotage a top merch mover? The guy clearly moves merch. Like I said, look at YouTube videos. Look at other forms of social media. Look at the freaking live events, the TV tapings, the pay-per-views. You see all these kids dressed up as certified Gs. You see a bunch of certified G-shirts, cup of haters, all this merch all over the place. 
What business would take away from something that makes them money to send a message? That is stupid. And a raw brand with sagging ratings and three hours of television to fill, the last thing they need to do is get into the games of we need to send a message to this guy and send a message to the locker room. Are we running a wrestling company? Are we running a sports entertainment company? Are we running an actual business? Are we invested more so in doing some high school diva drama BS? What's more important? And all these people that complain, fans and people in the business alike, complain about guys not having the it factor. Then when we get somebody like Enzo, who at least for what he is, has some form of it factor because people at least care somewhat, even though they're diminishing in their level of care because, again, the WWE is intentionally trying to sabotage him. We punish those that have it because they pissed somebody off? Because he peed in somebody's Cheerios? Because he jizzed in somebody's Starbucks? What the hell? This whole concept of because we don't like somebody, we're going to punish somebody is stupid. And the WWE sabotaging Enzo Amore, who whether you like him or not is actually over, whether you like him or not is a business success for the company, is absolutely, completely, and totally stupid. But it's so fitting for the wrestling business today or the sports entertainment business, whatever. So many people in the WWE are so caught up in their stupid ass feelings that they let their emotions get in the way of good business sense. This burial of Enzo Amore is stupid and it needs to stop. And you know a lot of you agree with me. Yeah. And remember, OTR Essential. It's not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. Later.